Number five. If you're true crime nerds like we are, Chris Watts probably needs no introduction. Married six years, with two toddler girls and a son on the way, he was cheating on his wife, Shanann, with a co-worker. One night in August of 2018, the two-timing oil field technician strangled Shanann to death hours after she returned from a business trip. He wrapped her in a sheet and hauled her down the stairs, her feet thudding on each step all the way down. He backed up his truck to the garage and laid her on the back floorboard. Somewhere between the murder and the garage, the commotion woke up his two girls, Bella and Cece. He went back inside and coaxed them both into the garage and sat them in the back seat. Just beneath their feet, their mother lay dead. He drove them to an oil field he worked at, a 45-minute trip. On arriving at the oil field, he buried Shanann while his daughters waited in that back seat. After putting his wife in a shallow grave, he smothered the younger Cece, age three, in front of her four-year-old sister. Then he climbed to the top of an oil tank and stuffed her in an eight-inch diameter hole at the top. Back to the truck, he said nothing as he smothered a pleading Bella with a blanket. She met her fate at the bottom of another oil tank. If he thought ahead, Chris might have worked out that his post-murder plans were woefully optimistic. After a lengthy interrogation, he, for some reason, agreed to an hours-long polygraph the next day. Chris failed the test miserably. At the following come-to-Jesus moment, he's confronted with the cold, hard reality. Broken Chris Watts would confess minutes after this happens. Like, don't let this continue any longer, please. I'm not trying to make anything continue. Like, I want them back home, like... But you know they're not coming back home. You know that. I don't know in the back of my head. I hope they come back home. But you know they're not. I I hope they come back home. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know they're not coming back home. Chris Watts is serving a life sentence without parole. Number four. This reaction may technically not be fake, but it's one of the all-time bests or worst. George Hughley V went on a drunken blackout bender and put his fist through the bedroom door of his girlfriend Yardley Love. In his police interview, he insisted over and over again that his intention was just to talk to her. He pounded on her door, and she screamed at him to go away. She refused to let him in, so he helped himself. He said they argued, and Yardley got so angry at him that she smashed her own head into the wall repeatedly. He left her there, bloodied, but very much alive. At least that's what he said, and perhaps what he thought actually happened in his inebriated stupor. It's true that when he left Yardley's room, she was alive on her bed, but unfortunately, she was in no condition to go on living. She would die over the next few hours, as the trauma to her tiny body was just too much. When the rubber finally met the proverbial road for George, his reaction can only be described as a freak out. She's dead. You killed her, George. You killed her. She's dead? I think you knew that already. No, I did not. She's dead. She's 
How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her, George. How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her. She's dead? Yes. She's dead? Yes. She's dead. She's dead. How? How? I already told you how. You already told us how as well. How is she dead? You just told us. You kicked in her door. She started a fight with you. You punched her in the head, or you cracked her. She's not dead. You cracked She's her head. Dead. You cracked She's her head dead. in the window or in the, in the wall. She's not dead. She is. She's not dead. I ain't BSing you right now. It's serious. I, I don't believe that she's dead. How I is, don't believe that she's did dead. Did you punch her? Did you hit her? How is she? The there's wall? no way she's dead. There's, she's not dead. I didn't. Listen, I never listen, did anything like this. Like that she's gonna be dead. Listen to me. She's not dead. Man. She's not. She, she, she's not dead. I didn't. I didn't. I did not. I did not. All right. Let's let's calm down. I did not like hurt her. Like she's she's not dead. Come down. Come down a minute, George, okay? Tell me she's not dead. George Hughley V was found guilty and sentenced to 23 years. Number three. This is Sarah Boone. In February of 2020, not only did she allegedly stuff her boyfriend in a suitcase and leave him there to suffocate, she documented the whole thing on video. We're not exactly sure what her defense strategy will be, but after many delays, her trial is scheduled to start in May of 2022. Her police interview following the death of her boyfriend, George Torres Jr., is a sight to behold. As she gradually emerges from her alcoholic haze, the realization slowly sets in and she looks like a trapped animal. We'll have all the details in the upcoming episode 12 of Absolutely Criminal. But here's the moment Sarah was confronted with the truth. And she seemingly couldn't believe her ears. Nowhere in there is he laughing, is he joking, he is begging. And you're the only one laughing. Okay. And you're the only one saying derogatory comments. Like you're mad. No. Please don't, I don't mean to sound negative, and I don't know if I can say this, but, <coughs> like, it's like you guys are kind of trying to, like, feed me, like. No, I'm just trying to show you a video that you no longer want to watch because you probably don't want to know the outcome of how and what you said. Well, I know what. You know, you know what's on that video now? No. You remember making that video? No. Oh. Why don't you remember making the video? Probably because we had been drinking. But you weren't drunk. No. Number two. Grant Amato blew his family's fortune on a Bulgarian webcam model. Grant was sort of the OG Chandler Halderson, who we profiled in episode 10 of Absolutely Criminal. Like Chandler, Grant killed his parents when he felt he had no other options. And similar to the Halderson family murders, Grant Amato's strategy was to play dumb and let the rest sort itself out. He went one step further, however, Grant murdered his own brother as well. It's almost like Chandler Halderson copied and pasted Amato's pathetic plan, did a little search and replace, and called it good. Grant lived with his parents and his brother in a very nice home with a sweet video game setup. His brother Cody shared his passion for technology and for health care. Grant, like his big brother, was a nurse anesthetist. In Florida, as in some other states, once the anesthesiologist renders the patient unconscious, the nurse anesthetist monitors the patient and administers drugs to maintain their surgical slumber. Well, both brothers had the same title, but Cody clearly took it more seriously. He rarely called in sick worked overtime, and was pulling in over $100,000 per year. Grant, on the other hand, worked the bare minimum of hours, creeped people out with his gaze, and was no stranger to calling out. In 2018, he was arrested and questioned in connection with propofol missing from the pharmacy. The drug is best known for having killed Michael Jackson. His reason? He was concerned his patients weren't sedated enough. Sedate would be an appropriate term to describe Grant during his police interview. He was Mr. Cool, calm, and collected, 
But that doesn't really work once you've been told your parents and brother are dead. All shot in the head. Take a look. So if anything happened in the home to bring law enforcement there, what would you think happened? That there was a shooting. Between whom? I don't know. Between Cody and, and my dad. And why would you think that? To protect me, or to help me, or to do something with me. So you're telling me you did not shoot Cody, no. your father, or your mother? No. I mean, I don't know, like, what more I can say. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be saying, like, all, like, you know, I don't know the, the way to say I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, like, what to even say. Grant D'Amato was sentenced to life behind bars, no parole, and no Bulgarian call girls. Our pick for number one is next. But first... If you're enjoying Absolutely Criminal and want to see more stories like this, please take a moment to hit thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell. Then check out our Patreon exclusives, because you don't want to miss a thing. Now back to our story. Number 1. If Fake Reactions was a company, Dahlia DiPolito would be the CEO. She hired a hitman to kill her husband, Mike DiPolito. She wanted to claim his modest six-figure fortune as her own. Sadly for Dahlia, the hitman she ended up with was an undercover cop. As cameras rolled, she presented her plan to the popo. The officer gave her several outs, impressing upon her the gravity of what she asked and asking her if she was really certain she wanted to do this. Her answer? With a level of certainty 50 times that of mortal humans, she sealed the deal and got out of the car. It's at this point most undercovers would give the bust signal, and his buddies in blue would rush in and arrest the perp. But it just so happened the show Pops was in town, and that got them thinking. Meanwhile, as all this was going down, detectives showed up at Mike DiPolito's door. This was never a welcome sign, as he was on probation for financial crimes, meaning police could come in and have a look-see whenever they wanted. Mike had an earlier unwelcome contact with cops. You see, this wasn't Dahlia's first attempt at usurping his life savings. She planted drugs in Mike's car and made an anonymous call to authorities. He was eventually pulled over, and naturally, he was completely flummoxed as to how the drugged baggie got there. Even as he heard himself say, They're not mine! He knew how that cliché would come off. But on something that has never happened, in the entire history of drug-detecting police pullovers, they believed him. Perhaps their spidey senses told them there was something off about her story. Back at Mike's front door, police broke the news to him that his wife wanted him dead and was under the impression she hired a hitman. A few minutes ago, Dahlia left for the gym and expected the dirty work to be done when she got home. With Mike's complete cooperation, police staged an elaborate fake crime scene complete with yellow tape, half a dozen squad cars, and a camera crew from cops. What followed was one of the worst fake reactions of all time. We had a report of a disturbance at your house, and there were shots fired. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am, he's been killed. No, 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 he's, no. he's been killed, ma'am. I'm sorry. No, 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 Listen. No, no. Try to calm down. No, Listen, no, right now what no, we, do, we need to get you to the station. No, we need to get you to our no, police station. I, want to see we, him. I can't let you stand, ma'am. We have to do our job. No, if you want us to find his killer, okay? No, we need you to calm down. No, 
I'm going to need you to go with these detectives, okay? Does he have enemies? Is there anyone that would want to hurt him? Okay, who would want to hurt him? Witnesses said they saw a black male running from me. I can't let you see him, ma'am. Ma'am, I cannot do this right now. Ma'am, I can't do it. Detective Yopi, I need you. I need you to take her to the station. I can't. Ma'am, go with these detectives. If you want to help your husband, okay? If you want to help your husband, you need to go to the station with these gentlemen and tell us everything you know about who he knows, who he's connected to. Don't worry, we've already taken care of dogs with animal control for right now. Everything's under control. After two trials were truncated due to technicalities, the third time was a bitter charm for Dahlia DiPolito. She was sentenced to 16 years in prison. Until next time, be safe and beware.